Hey guys, it's Aaron. So I wanted to look at an example, just spend some time doing some cool modeling in SketchUp, um, but specifically an example around uh, countersinking screw heads. We've done this a little bit, touch on here and there, where we just kind of, you know, put the screw shape in and put a bigger circle around it, push it down, and it creates that countersink shape. Um, pretty easy to do. But there was a specific detail that came up in something I was modeling where I had like a domed over Phillips head screw, or it could be like a rivet or, or just a rounded over so it actually had geometry, it wasn't flat. And then that whole piece was countersunk down into like a little bit of a pit. So it was not the easiest thing to do, but once I did it a couple times, I came up with a couple tips that I wanted to share with you on how to create this specific geometry. So let's dive right in. Okay, so there's a couple ways I want to show this. First, we're going to start simple. I'm just going to start with, let's, uh, here's a thing. <laughs> it's a, uh, let's call it a, a board of some sort. So countersinking in itself is not too hard, right? So I start with a circle, and then I put another circle inside of it. And if I take this circle and I move it on the blue axis, I'm going to hit the up arrow to lock in the blue axis. I can push that down. And for all intents and purposes, that's it. That's a countersunk hole. Now, if I, if I was just trying to draw a screw hole, I could pull this all the way through, and then that is a screw hole with a countersunk area around it. Pretty easy. So the, the specific detail that I was putting into the model I'm talking about was doming this over first. So I'm gonna start by putting a circle right here in the middle. I'm gonna put it on the green axis and pull it out to here. I'm gonna cut it in half. Now I'm going to select the outsides of this circle and just say, follow me with this. That's going to give me a dome. So that, that's, that's kind of a cool shape. That's a nice shape that you could put onto something right there. But just to take us a little bit further, I'm going to select that shape and hit scale. And I'm going to push this down. We'll, we'll push it down to uh, just flush with the side there. Okay, there, there we go. So that was kind of the shape I was, I was putting in. Just to take it a little bit further, this was actually a Phillips head screw. So let's go, I'm gonna triple click and make this into a group. That way I can work on the surface here. It's not gonna merge with anything. All right, over here, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle, something like that. And then I will take those two shapes, go snap the middle modifier key and rotate to 90 degrees. So now we have a Phillips head type shape. I'm gonna push pull that up, triple click and make that into a group. Now, I wanna push that into here and use solid tools to subtract out that Phillips screwdriver head shape. So first thing I do is line it up. I wanna line up horizontally by moving it from the middle of this section and I'm gonna hold down the shift or hit the left arrow key to lock on the green axis. There we go. Next one's gonna move over on the red axis. Again, click in the middle there. Red axis, bring it over to right there. All right, looks good. Now I'm gonna move it down vertically. So I'm gonna just drop it down so it sinks into the face. Maybe a little bit more. I'll click right here. There we go. Now I just wanna subtract that out. So I'm gonna select it, use trim or subtract. I don't really care. This cutter is disposable, so I can just use subtract and subtract that from this bottom space. Problem is, right now this bottom space is not solid. I can tell that because when I go into solid tools, it says, oh, well, it's not solid. I can tell because it tells me it's not solid. Um, if I go into my entity information and pick on this, it's going to tell me it's just a group, not a solid group. So I got something to clean up there if I want to be able to use solid tools to clean that up. And it's pretty simple. If I look at the inside here, remember when I cut that circle in half, I didn't clean this up. I didn't get rid of this other half. So I'm just gonna double click and erase that half a circle. That should make this a solid group now. So now what I can do is subtract that. Oops. Subtract this. So select the cutter, hit subtract, hit the second one, and there we go. Now this is easy enough to duplicate in the group too because I can just select that geometry and I can modifier key, move it over, and it'll cut in there. Perfect. Boom. Just what I want. Okay. That's great. That's pretty easy to do. But what happens if I have something like this? So over here, I'm going to put uh, something like that. Remember to delete the bottom half this time. I'm going to select this. I'm going to say, follow me with this half. 
So I have a dome. Now, I want this countersunk screw head around the outside of this dome. So let's, let's do that. Let's see how we can go about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually push this down a little bit more. I'm going to countersink a little bit more. So I'm going to grab it. I'm going to use this edge right here rather than using the blue snap. I can just select on a vertical space and push that down a little bit more. And then I'm going to grab this and say, make that into a group. I'm going to control C to copy that group. You could also go up to edit and say copy. I'm going to come out here. I'm going to say edit and paste. When I paste, it connects to my, my cursor and see as I move it around, it automatically snaps the orientation of the faces on the sphere. This is good because this is what I want. I want this perpendicular to the face. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a spot to put it. And I'm zooming here a little tighter. So it's, it's right up flush against here. I could do a little bit of, of uh, orienting and, and moving this around a little bit here. Uh, I just, for this example, I'm just going to scoot it out just a little bit on the green axis. So it comes out something like that. There we go. Just enough so that cone pierces through the side there. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to make five copies. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to go rotate. I want to rotate around the middle. So I'm going to turn on hidden and then I'm going to use this top point. I do want to make sure to hit the up axis on there or the up, up arrow key to lock to the blue axis. If I don't, then there's a chance I'm going to lock or reference one of these faces here and it's not going to move perfectly around a circle. So up arrow, click here and I want five evenly spaced holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I hit the modifier key option because I want to make a copy and I'm going to type in 360 and hit enter. That makes one copy all the way around back onto the original. Now before I do anything else, see it still says my dimension. I typed in there 360. I'm going to type divide by five. That puts five of these little cups all the way evenly spaced around. It does also still have one on top of my original. So I want to make sure that I hit delete to get rid of that redundant copy. All right. Now, what do we have to do here? We have to come in and dish this shape out and then cut the remainder of this cup off. Right. And if you look here, it's not quite simple. It was over here. Remember here, I just did it once and then copied it. I can't do that here because if you look, this dish intersects a different piece of geometry each time. See that? See how that hidden geometry, where, where those crosses are, where those pieces cross over? It's different. So what do I do with this? Well, here's, here's my thought on this. I'm going to double click, I'm sorry, triple click all of the dome and make it into a group. I'm going to go into this group. I'm going to turn off hidden. I'm also going to go to component edit and hide rest of model. Get rid of those cups. I don't need those right now. I'm going to select the surface of the dome, right click, intersect faces with model. So this says anything in the model crosses into this surface, cut it. That's going to be all of my disks. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete each of these. Now, when I come out here, I'm halfway there. I have that part cut. I don't, however, have my cups here cut. So here's two things I got to do. One, I have to explode my dome. Then I have to explode each of my cutters, my cups, my whoops. I must have hit undo. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, so each of my each of my little screw hole cutting cups, I'm going to select and explode. As soon as I explode them, they merge with that other cut geometry. Now all I have to do is Go to each of these pieces. I'm going to click right here so it selects the disk. I just delete that and I'm done. Well, I'm done as soon as I delete all five. Now I'm done. So you can see that was, was kind of the shape I was going for. And I was like, wow, it's got to be an easy way to do that. And there was. I ended up I started off trying to play with solid tools or something like that, making cutters, but then I realized if I just make the geometry and let it intersect, it's pretty easy. So I know that was kind of a, it was a weird example for sure, but there's a lot of pieces there with intersecting geometry 
that may come into play. Like I said, if you're doing something on that, like we did on the first block, it's real simple. Countersinking is just holes. But once you go into making that kind of geometry on a curved surface, it's definitely a little bit more work. If you did like that, please click like down below. That way I'll know. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create a couple videos a week here and you'll be notified of them as well as our live streams if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment. We're doing more and more of these videos based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.